Right, welcome back. New t-shirt for you, hopefully keeping you entertained and on your toes. <coughs> so, if you recall last time, I introduced you to the quadrant graph, which spoke about problem, solution, concrete, abstract. So, I want to just extend that a little. Um, I'm going to take some time, maybe another two modules, just to get through this. Because what's important here is, as we create these whole individuals, uh, this concept called hybrid thinking, um, which really says, well, you know, the future belongs to individuals that are good at design, or good at architecture, or good at solutioning, or good at agile, scrum, wrapped all into one. And we call these hybrid or super thinkers, super mixers, actually, is a term that we've used internally. So, and that's really what we're trying to do, is we're trying to make you into a super mixer. Uh, but you do need the tool sets in order to use this. Uh, you need some skill sets, as we've spoken about in previous modules, and you need the mindset and the knowledge sets. So all of these pieces are what you need to bring together to, to use these effectively. So if you recall last time, we spoke about the fact that design is actually this loop here, in which you start with a concrete problem. And we spoke about crime, if you recall, or the month-end billing procedure. And this is all about, you know, let's reduce crime. So instead of having a knee-jerk reaction into the solution space, we go up here and we start to extract. We do a whole bunch of research and we start to extract some insights. And we actually eventually only then get to the point in which we truly understand what the problem might actually look like. And then you do what's called a how might we question. And that's how might we actually try and solve this particular little lever in this great expanse of a fourth order problem, for example. So then you move over into solution space, and, and this is really where the ideation occurs, um, and where you can do things like probes, and you're going to do concepts, and you're going to do experiments, and all of those types of things, till eventually you get to this point in which you know you've experimented and you've validated your idea and your concepts, um, um, and you can iterate through that. You go through a cycle here in which you will continually experiment with your ideas and your concepts, so you'd validate them against your principles, you'd validate them against things like goals and objectives if they existed, you'd validate them against the value and valued, valuable drivers of your customer and your business. So all the things that you'd be consistently testing. Remember, I don't like this term fail fast, I actually prefer the term learn fast, all right? because ultimately that's what prototyping is. Prototyping is all about learning fast, it's not about failing fast. So we want to learn as fast as we can from our customers, and this is the cycle that we're working through. Did it work? Didn't it work? Eventually to the point where, hold on, if it really isn't working, we almost go right back to the beginning, and you do what's called a pivot. And you basically head back to the start, and you have a look at all your underlying assumptions again, and you start the process over again. But if you get to this point, and you're comfortable with the fact that we can now move forward, what you now do is you spin through a separate loop. And this entire loop here, is actually called the Lean Startup. All right, so as you take your idea that went from the wicked problem space, you identified the heuristics which actually sat here, and then you took it all the way through this way down to, uh, we're going to now begin to industrialize it. And in this process, um, there's some understanding of architectural components. So something like architecture comes in here where you actually begin to understand, all right, how do these pieces actually fit together into something that I can create an engine and repeatability from? Um, uh, what sort of value streams might emerge from this? What are the experiences that I want to be able to create and the services? So service design, experience design, all of those things. Actually, the rubber hits the road in this piece here, right in the beginning here, and especially up at a large sort of portfolio level. But once you've gone through that exercise of architecting, you then move into the agile space. And basically, your agile space runs through a few iterations this way as you begin to deliver. But you deliver effectively against um, what's been designed at an architectural level. So agile without architecture, I have a problem with. And I've been involved in projects like that where you, you do build these short little sprints, but without the actual stories and without the grand epic that you're actually trying to solve and how all these pieces fit together, you're just often exacerbating the problem of creating silos and fragmentation in the organization. So architecture is key in preventing that from happening. But it must be connected effectively up to this design space, which is really looking at in innovative ways that we can actually try and solve a problem. So that then kicks off a process of the lean startup as you begin to mature your organization and run through a cycle of commercialization and industrialization. Thank you.